All right, so just wanted to send one last uh, video here about the AP test. Um, there will actually be another video about some of the AP Classroom FRQs tomorrow. But for right now, just going over this information um, and answering all your questions that you guys posted yesterday. Just want to make sure I get everything covered. So uh, to start out, just a reminder what the test is covering. It's covering units 1 through 7, and it's not covering 8 through 10. So it's not covering 2D arrays. There's no inheritance, and there's no recursion uh, going to be on this at all. So, a reminder that the exam is this Friday at 3 p.m. our central time. So make sure you guys are logged in at that time. Um, I think it recommends you log in 30 minutes before your test. So make sure you're logged in at that point. Uh, if you aren't able to make it, um, if you end up sleeping through it or whatever the case is, um, then you just they'll send you a link to take the makeup test, which is going to be June 3rd. It's a Wednesday, um, and then it'll be at 1 p.m. at that time. Um, just a reminder about the two different questions that are on the test. Um, so your entire test is 45 minutes. Um, so you'll have 25 minutes for question one, which is 65% of the test. Uh, and this one's going to be about arrays and array lists. So make sure that you review how to do arrays and how to do array lists, um, as well as you have your uh, Java Quick reference sheet. Um, but it's going to assess students' ability to write program code to satisfy method specifications using expressions, conditional statements, and iterative statements, uh, that just means loops, and then write code to create, traverse, and manipulate elements in 1D arrays or array lists. And the other part of the test is um, on methods and control structures. Uh, this is gonna be a 15 minute section and it's 35% of the test. Um, and it's going to, you have to write code to create objects of a class and call methods, um, and then write codes to satisfy method specifications when they tell you to do this or do that or whatever. Um, conditional statements and loops as well. So it does look like with the timing there, the 25 and the 15, um, that there would be a five minute break in between the two sections. Um, not exactly sure if that's how it's gonna go or if that's just a, a five minute you know, grace period maybe they give you um, as far as that goes. So um, somebody asked the question about what are the most common method calls that we're gonna need? Um, and this is what is on your Java Quick Reference Sheet. So you want to make sure you have a printed out copy of your Java Quick Reference Sheet uh, so that you can reference them. So as far as strings go, um, they might ask you to do length or substring. Substring's a big important one. There's two different ways to do it, so I'd make sure you remember, kind of refresh that. Um, and then index of uh, equals, remember with strings you don't do equals equals, you do dot and then the word equals um, and compare to. Uh, as far as integers, you've got min, max, value, um, turning stuff into an int and whatnot, casting it um, between ints and doubles. And then all your math functions, so abs, um, pow, squirt, and random, making sure you remember how to do that, especially random, that's a popular one. Um, and then uh, for arrays and array lists, I'm sorry, this is just for lists, not arrays. Um, so array lists, you have dot size, dot add, dot get, dot set, dot remove, um, all those different commands and method calls. And then your two kind of overlying methods um, would be like your string to string method um, to create that and to call that, as well as your uh, boolean dot equals for there. Now you can know more about strings, you can know more about integers, but this is pretty much anything that they would test about those on the AP test. So as long as you know these, you're fine um, as you go. The biggest question I've gotten, um, <clears throat> even on Discord, and I kind of answered it there, uh, is that, well, if there's a lockdown browser, how are we supposed to use our, the ID or compiler? Um, College Board has definitely said that you guys are allowed to use an ID um, or compiler. So what I'm talking about is like a Dr. Java or a REPL or something like that, that actually compiles your code. Um, however, if you don't have one, you're going to be just fine. You don't need one. Um, so from what I can kind of gather, um, I also asked Dr. Drevlo about his thoughts on this. Um, obviously, he doesn't know anything about specific, but he said a lockdown browser is not going to be used on all exams. So it probably makes sense that you won't have to use the lockdown browser on this one. Um, but just to be safe, if you download Dr. Java or Eclipse, you're guaranteed gonna be able to do that because that's not part of a web browser. That's not gonna be locked out on your lockdown browser. Um, as well as if you have a word processing software, so Microsoft Word, Works, Notepad, something to type, that will for sure be accessible during your test. 
Um, if you don't use the Lockdown browser, um, then you could also use additional like REPL, Google Docs to type up your work or anything you wanted to there. Um, but just to be safe, I would have Dr. Java Eclipse downloaded um, on your computer if you have a Chromebook. You won't be able to download those, um, and that's why an IDE or compiler isn't required. Um, because if there's a lockdown browser and you have a Chromebook, you won't be able to use any type of compiler. Um, also, how do you submit your answers? If you've been submitting answers to the AP Classroom, the FRQs, um, that's how you're gonna do it. So there's three different ways that you could do it. Um, so the first thing you can do is you can type it up in a Word document or type it up in a compiler, REPL, whatever, and then just copy it and paste it into your, excuse me, test. Um, they do say, I will just highlight this, uh, to make sure you type your AP ID and initials at the top of the response. Um, so they're there. Now they do say here, if you're going to use this strategy, window one should be Chrome, um, in which you have the exam question, and window two where you're typing your answer. And it does say a Google Doc here, so this definitely makes me think that you will not be using the Lockdown Browser, since you can have two different windows open up at one time. Um, and then if this is the case, then you could definitely have REPL open as well. So the second method would be to um, attach a document. So this would be some sort of uh, text file or doc or something like that. Your file formats are right here. Uh, let me underline that. So any type of Microsoft Word, um, like I said, or PDF or dot text, like a notepad, um, anything like that will work. This one also wants to make sure that you type your API ID at the top. Um, and once again, it's kind of allowing here two windows, which once again makes me think uh, no lockdown. And the third option is to just take a picture of your work. So handwrite it and then um, attach the picture. Um, acceptable formats are right here. It also means you could type it up and save it f as that file um, for whatever reason. Um, but just note that a .java file will not work. So make sure you don't submit a .java file um, even if you are using REPL or something like that, just copy and paste it. Um, don't, don't download the file and upload the file. And then kind of the last questions that you guys were asking me about um, is that if, um, so are you allowed to take a break? Um, like I said, the test only adds up to 40 minutes, so there might be a five minute break. Otherwise, no. Um, you can definitely walk away from your computer, but your time's not gonna stop. It's only 45 minutes, um, you know, which is shorter than a normal class period. So you should be able to sit through a 45 minute test. Um, but if you do need to leave, obviously you're at your house, so you can leave. Um, next question, you are allowed to use any paper notes that you have. Um, once again, you might be able to use online resources, but if there's a lockdown browser, then you wouldn't. Um, so make sure that you have the, any of your notes printed out, um, especially that Java quick reference. Um, it's linked on any of the AP links I've been giving you recently. Um, I believe it is linked in the AP folder for the week, um, as well as it's in the links folder for distance learning on Schoology. Um, make sure you use the updated one this year um, using any of those links I just told you. If you just do a Google search for Java Quick Reference AP Exam, uh, make sure you have the, the current one. Uh, what if you miss the exam? Like I said, do the makeup test in June. And then um, what's happening after the AP exam? That was a good question, uh, right? Because we still have two weeks of school left. And you will find out Monday. Um, and there's a little hint there that you can read and see if you can riddle what that's all about. Uh, once again, I will be online um, from 11 to noon on today and Thursday. So if you have questions, I can meet with you outside of that one hour. That's for sure. Just let me know. Um, but otherwise that, um, like I said, we're gonna, I'm gonna have one video to go over your um, AP Classroom uh, FRQ answers that you've been submitting, since those are gonna kind of replicate what the test looks like and everything as well. Good luck. Uh, there's also a couple tasks to do two days before the exam, so make sure you do those as well. Those will be outlined in Schoology. Also, if for some reason I did not answer your question, um, I did look through them all, but if I didn't, uh, just, like I said, shoot me a message. 
either Schoology message, Discord message, or pop into the the video chat.